Mandala is kind of a project that started early 2015. Three of us, my cousin and our current partner, producer, Joel Garcia. We were looking to develop a brand and Joel reached out to us. My cousin and myself have been importing since 2012 and developing for other people. Mm-hmm. By 2014, mid-2014, we we're a little burnt out of uh, trying to develop people's brands. So we started working on our own project and uh, Joel reached out to us telling us that he had the best tasting tequila in the world. And we kind of chuckled at it because everybody says that all the time, especially when they're the producer. And uh, he sent me samples and I told him he wasn't kidding. And that's kind of how the project was born. We started developing the brand, the concept uh, early 2015. And I mean, I'm personally from Jalisco and then my cousin's a lawyer in Jalisco. Joel, his, his family grows agave, so he's from Jalisco. So it crossed paths and we got the opportunity that we were all working on the same concept at the same time, kind of just wanting to develop a brand. And that's kind of how Mandala was born in um, early 2015 and then launched it in uh, November 16, 2016. I got kind of familiar with meeting like Casa Dragon, his founder, and I got to see how they approach the market, right, from a branding perspective. It seems to be that's the hardest part of this, right, of launching a tequila company. It's how are you going to go in at what price point? Who are you trying to go after as you guys were navigating that arena? Like what decisions are being made to get to the point of this is the bottle that looks this way and who's the market and where you even begin? Like how does that brand start to even move in a certain direction? When we first got the samples, we obviously got samples of everything, the Blanco, the Repo, the Añejo, and the Extra Añejo. But with a big demand in the market for Extra Añejos right now, how it's grown in the last couple of years, and with Joel had just purchased a ceramics plant in Morelos, his idea and his vision, he wanted to start with an Extra Añejo. So when people think about Mandala, they mainly think about this brand because we started backwards. We started with the extra Añejo. Even though we had the rest of the line available, we started with this. And after a bunch of sketches, designs, concepts, this is how this one was born. And obviously a circle, because it represents a mandala, kind of like the ones on the side. But that's kind of how we hit the market. We wanted to start with the, with the extra Añejo only because the demand is so high. And price point was a big thing is a little nerve wracking because for my cousin and myself, it was the first time we were going to launch a brand that was over a hundred dollars. So it was very uncomfortable and scary, especially approaching our accounts that we had already built a relationship with because we got a lot of, a lot of pushback at first, but we weren't trying to be like anybody. Mm -hmm. We just figured we have a great product. We have a great packaging. Let's make our own niche. Like let's not try to be like anybody. Let's just, open up our own space and just put in the work and the time and the marketing behind it and then let the product speak for itself. But the vision was always to go into the premium segment and starting with the ceramic bottle. But we love what you said about the Blanco because that's probably closest to our hearts as all the work that we've put in. The extra Nejo kind of speaks for itself. We kind of look at it as like the star athlete, big brother who succeeds at everything and little brother's kind of there going, hey, you know, what about me? But this obviously brings the attention, but the Blanco for people that really enjoy a good tequila, the Blanco is phenomenal. A little more difficult to draw the attention uh, away from the extra Nejo, which is fabulous too for its own reasons, but the Blanco definitely uh, something that we're, we're very proud of.